Hi, I'm Derek with Voice of Cylinder Head Services. Uh, today we're going to go over a few measuring devices that we use here at the shop. Uh, just a few things that we have on hand that we use on a daily basis. Uh, we got electronic digital calipers. Um, <clears throat> we use those pretty much for most of our measuring uh, to get a roundabout number. They're not as accurate as our other tools like these micrometers I have laid out here. Um, they're, <clears throat> these are a lot more accurate, within a few, a few thousands more accurate. Uh, we're we're going to go over uh, measuring a used valve and what dimensions we need to look at in order to choose and verify that our new valve is proper. We're also going to go over how to measure a guide, the outside diameter, the inside diameter, and the valve stem seal that you'd want to use on that guide and the valve combo. <clears throat> this is a spring testing device. It tests the, the pressures of the springs. This is more for high performance work when you're getting a new cam to verify that your open and closed pressures are where you want them. Uh, <clears throat> we have a dual spring set up today that we'll talk about how you measure both of those springs at the same time using the retainer. <clears throat> we also have feeler gauges. You can use these for checking the work uh, how warped the cylinder head is, as well as checking, say, valve clearance uh, in between the cam and the lifter lobe. This is a Subaru Turbo cylinder head, and we use these very commonly on these to check to see if your valves are tight, which would cause a misfire. <clears throat> and also, when we're rebuilding the heads, we got to verify that we're within the specifications that the uh, factory calls for. All right, so. <clears throat> This is a caliper, it's a digital caliper, and uh, you want to turn it on, of course, zero out, close it all the way, and click the zeroing button so that you can start at a zero measurement. Uh, we'll start out by <clears throat> measuring a used valve, the dimensions on that. Um, so you slide this open, and you should see it uh, increasing in number. This one is metric and inches. So for this video, we're going to use inches, uh, and we just pull it open here using this rolling feature that it has to open it up and close it, uh, and then we close it back down on the valve, making sure both the, both the ends are flat against the sides we're trying to measure. This one comes out at about 0.368 of an inch. Um, <clears throat> we'll also use this micrometer because it's going to be a little more accurate. This, you can set the zero. It's a little more difficult to set the, the zero on these. Let's see. So this is a standard one inch uh, tool that we can use to verify our settings are correct. We just open this all the way up. Until that, until this measuring piece will fit inside the micrometer right. you want to make sure both ends are flat against the measuring tool this also has a uh, loose feature on it so that it can open up and adjust and so one technician is consistent with another technician if you were to crank down on this side, you'd get inaccurate readings. And so we want to we want to see, I don't know if you can see that here, we want to see that zero lined up with that line to be accurate. And there's a way to adjust this right here with another tool that you can just shift this thing around, lock it in place. Um. <clears throat> so back to our valve, we'll go ahead and measure the stem. And so this, this particular caliper goes from zero to one inch. Zero being all the way closed, one inch pretty much all the way open, but it has increments right here that each line is 25 thousandths. Uh, <clears throat> when you're measuring a guide, you can use the three, I got one, two, and three marks on here. That'll give you uh, 0.1 of an inch, 0.2 of an inch, 0.3 of an inch, and then each little line is uh, 25 thousandths. 
And then it has additional lines on here for when you're in between those 25 thousandths. Uh, the reading on this right here is uh, 50, <clears throat> 0.371 of an inch, which is pretty close to 11 30 seconds. <clears throat> and that's, that's what we expected for this valve. So on our new valve, on our new valve, we just want to confirm that it, it is the same measurement as the old valve which we are getting uh, 371 as well. <clears throat> and then for the head diameter, uh, we usually use calipers for these because we can be within a few thousandths and know that we're gonna be correct. This new valve here is one point one and a half inches and 58 thousandths. So we just gotta confirm with our old valve that that is pretty close. And this one's 1.558. So it's identical. This valve will definitely replace this valve. There is a couple other things you can check, like the tip, uh, the groove to tip length, which is, uh, let's see here, 0.348 of an inch. On these used valves, sometimes you grind off the top of them when rebuilding. And so it could be a little bit different, but as long as we're in the same ballpark, we should be good. We're getting point, point 0.3 on this one. So it's been, it's been worn down, ground down to fit uh, the application that it's going into. But this valve will definitely replace this one. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> on a guide, we can measure the... Uh, outside diameters and inside diameters to confirm that it's accurate to what we want. Uh, this is a pretty bulk guide that fits into a half inch diameter hole. We have core drill reamers that drill out those holes on our other machines. So we know that we want about a half an inch on these. And we're getting 0.501 uh, on that. So that's perfect. It'll give us an interference fit once we drill out that hole and drive this guide into it, it'll be locked in place. Uh, we also want to confirm that the inside diameter is accurate to the valve that we're going to put in it. And we're getting a 0 0.373, 374, which means that it should fit over this valve with about a thousandths to two thousandths of clearance, which is what we're seeing now. There's no wiggle from valve to guide. <clears throat> so that's accurate. Another thing that we'd want to look at is the length. And if you have the cylinder head that you're going to install this in, and you'd pre-check the original guide to make sure that the length is at this length or shorter. So we can trim this one up uh, after we install it. <clears throat> and we got our valve stem seal for this setup. And the valve stem seals are uh, they go on the end of the guide here, and the valve goes through it, and this keeps oil from freely flowing out the guide. So we need to make sure that these clearances are proper so that it fits against the stem of the valve. It's not going to let a whole bunch of oil through. It still does let a little bit through, but uh, just enough to keep the system lubricated. Uh, so how we measure this valve stem seal very similar to how we measured the guide. I'm just going to go to the inside diameter here and use the caliper points on the back side and just stretch it out till it touches that rubber just lightly. This does have an interference fit, so it is going to be quite a bit tighter than the outside diameter of the guide. We're looking at uh, 0.489. So that gives us at least a 10 thousandths press fit onto the guide, which is good. You want it to squish, to squish onto the guide. So that it'll hold tight while it's running. Uh, the next piece that you'd measure is the stem diameter hole. And the same thing, we want an interference fit here, so um, it should be a little bit tinier than the valve stem. We're getting a 0.339, which is about 30 thousandths, 33 thousandths smaller than the stem. Uh, this also has a gator spring on it. I don't know if you can see that clearly. But uh, that spring also helps hold tension on the rubber against the stem to reduce oil going a 
along the stem of the valve through the guide and into the combustion chamber. <clears throat> Another way that we measure the inside diameter of a guide is using a pilot here. This is a 373 carbide pilot and you can watch where that thing, it's a tapered, it's a tapered tool so up here is a little bit bigger than down here. So when it goes into the guide, wherever it stops, we can mark that with a marker and measure it with a micrometer. And that'll be a little more accurate when you're searching for a specific guide to valve, guide to valve clearance. Uh, this is the most accurate way uh, we have on hand today. So just right where that line is, you take your uh, micrometer measure that down. So we're getting uh, 372 here, which gives us about a thousandths clearance, which on most cars is, is appropriate. This is a valve from a Ford 360 head that uh, usually requires one and a half thousandths clearance to two thousandths clearance. So we definitely want to ream that out all said and done to make sure we have the proper clearance. <clears throat> uh, next we can go over our uh, Valves or our shims here, they come in uh, a lot of different thicknesses, as small as uh, one and a half thousandths, that's 0 0.0015, all the way up to about 32 thousandths, 0 0.032. Um, <clears throat> on certain heads like this, we have uh, set clearances that it needs to be in between the lifter cup and the heel of the cam. And on this used head, we'd expect it probably to be a little bit tight, tighter than spec. But we can use these feeler gauges to, with the heel, with the lobe, let's see, with the lobe pointing up uh, straight above the lifter, we can measure in between the lifter cup and the heel. And we just check the thickness of this feeler gauge. This is four thousandths, and that goes right through. So we can bump it up to the next size, or quite a bit larger to see how big our gap is. This is about 11 thousandths, that still goes through. The specification for this particular engine valve clearance is 13 thousandths to 15 thousandths, so we'll do a 13 and see if that's... So that one doesn't want to go in, so that means we're smaller than 13 thousandths if the 13 thousandths feeler gauge won't go in. And 11 thousandths would so we'll try a 12. The 12,000 slides in right <clears throat> nice and freely, um, and the 13 won't. So that tells me that we're a little bit above 12,000 clearance on this particular valve lifter setup. Um, <clears throat> all right, but that's when you're doing a valve job on these things and you're rebuilding this, uh, you need to make sure that your clearances are set within spec all said and done. Um, if you're checking a used cylinder head on the car, uh, it, we always recommend that you check the clearances because these things will wear into the head, the valve will wear into the head and create tight clearances which could cause a misfire and uh, serious issues with your cylinder head. That would lead to <clears throat> needing it to be rebuilt. Alright, that's, that's all for valve clearance there. Uh, we're going to move on to this retainer dual spring setup. There's a couple ways you can measure this. Uh, we use calipers to get a general reading. Uh, so we'll do that to start out with. So to, to measure these, there's your flat spots on the top and flat spots on the bottom. You just want to make sure that they're flat against your calipers as best as you can. We're getting a 2.378. And if you're trying to replace an old spring with a new spring, you want to measure these uh, and measure your new ones to make sure they're the same same free length. This one's about 2.3. They're, they're pretty close to the same. And this spring here is a dual, dual spring combination uh, for performance like on a big block or a small, uh, small block Chevy. Um, this spring goes inside the larger spring, just like so. 
Um, if you only had the single spring, <laughs> um, if you only had the single spring, you wouldn't have to use uh, this retainer to measure both, but I'll go over that in a minute. Uh, this is our spring testing machine. It goes up to about 500 pounds. Um, and what we can do here is at different measurements, that's not going to go. At different measurements, about two inches, we're looking at uh, about 55 thousandths clearance, or 55 thousand, excuse me, 55 pounds of pressure. Um, as we go down, that increases more and more. And depending on where your closed pressure is and your open pressure is where you'd want to verify this. So uh, let's, let's say our closed pressure was uh, about 1.7. We're getting about 110 pounds, which is pretty good for closed pressure. Um, and then you got your cam lift, which say your lift was about 500,000, so you'd want to increase that. Uh, shrink that down the extra 500,000 to 1.250. Uh, and that'd give us a uh, about 200 pounds at closed pressure, or excuse me, at open pressure. <clears throat> With the dual spring combination, you'd slide the dual spring in there, and to be accurate, you'd want to use your retainer as well. Uh, <clears throat> so, you, so you push your retainer down in there, and you have to measure the thickness of that retainer to subtract that from our gauge here. This is about a hundred thousandths. So whatever we're shooting for, we were at uh, 1.7 before, we'll have it at 1.8 to compensate for our uh, retainer. And the reason we got to use a retainer for this is that there's a couple different steps on this retainer and this will contact the inner spring and this will contact the outer spring and so you need that to get an accurate spring pressure reading <clears throat> so we'll put that in our measuring device here go down to the same 1.7 and with that well 1.8 to compensate for our retainer that puts us at about 200 pounds at the open pressure, which is a significant difference uh, just adding that inner spring. And if we had 500 thousandths of lift, we'd take that down to 1.250, which with this particular spring goes up almost double. We're at 400 pounds of pressure. So for certain performance applications, you need a lot of, a lot of lift. To move this valve up and down without having valve flow. If you don't have enough pressure, your valve is going to stay open and gases are going to blow by and it's going to create a big inefficiency of power. And I think, uh, I think that's all that we have for today. Huh? Comments? <laughs> Um, if there's any questions that you have about anything I've gone over today, uh, please leave comments and questions uh, in the comments link below. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, got some education from it. Uh, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.